Hola amigos. I had the pleasure of sitting down with my good friend Brian and we spoke about trading stories and trading topics. And this video is geared more towards for beginner day traders and then some of the questions that you might come up with in the beginning. I have a list of those questions below if you want to take a look. And before we start, Brian's going to introduce himself a little bit and then we're going to head right into the topics. So I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, uh, so Tim and I actually met uh, back when he was living in Virginia um, and we were both uh, kind of new to the web development space, um, kind of just learning the ropes of coding and building out uh, full stack applications. And through that, got to really um, get to know this guy well. And <laughs> since then, uh, found out we share a lot of common interests, uh, remote work being one of them, but kind of uh, a new one that uh, we're both on right now is uh, stock trading. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of one thing that uh, literally we talk about, like text each other every day about. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I actually just got started about three weeks ago. And Brian's been doing this for, I think, a couple months or more, right? Uh, pretty much since the start of this year. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of experience on your belt. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's <laughs> Uh, I, I wrote up a few questions just so we go over um, just for people who are getting into it. And then at the end, I do want to include um, a, like a, a link for Brian's Weeble, because if you guys uh, like what he's offering, you know, feel free to support him. That's he's helping us out. And I feel uh, he gives some good stuff out there. Um, so we'll just shoot through the questions. Keep it short. Um, so the first one I have is how would you get started in trading if you had to do it all over again? with what you know right now? Uh, so if I had to do it all over again, I'd like to get a good introduction to technical analysis. So there's different concepts that are helpful for somebody who's new to trading to know about before diving in, just so you don't lose a lot of money unnecessarily. Uh, things like um, understanding different support and resistance levels. Mm -hmm. um, when you're buying into a stock, uh, sometimes you'll enter in at the wrong price um, yeah. and it'll, and like a lot of, a lot of novice tra traders, uh, including myself, I think in the past several months made them have made or make the mistake of entering into a stock at the wrong price only to find that literally your first five minutes in the stock's still falling down. Right. 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 And that, that can be very discouraging and, and, um, you know, can cause you to, to want to either pull out of the stock or, you know, kind of. Yeah, like maybe like stay in it, but then you don't know how far it's gonna fall. Mm -hmm. And so technical analysis is is kind of key, like learning how to read charts and candlestick patterns. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably one of the more important things. Yeah, um, I, I think that's really good advice, Get, getting to know your tools. And, you know, I, I would say even practicing on a simulator before you get on. It, I've heard that over and over again from all the resources that I've come across. Um, one thing I'm curious about, though, is um, I've heard you can start with, you know, um, to actually make some money to, to spend. You need to have like maybe 5000 or 10000 to actually buy enough stocks to make like a profit on a small, a small change in the price. Um, in your opinion, how much money do you think you would need to actually get started? Um, I like that you said before that um, you could use a simulator and not have to spend all, um, any money actually. But mm -hmm. I think that um, ideally you'd want to start with um, something like 500 bucks um, mm -hmm. and keep your position small. Um, uh, I can, I'll share a little bit about this later, but the, a lot of the um, trades that I'll do are, are with stocks that are um, more, uh, I guess they'd be classified as micro cap or penny stocks. Mm -hmm. um, but these are the kind of stocks that have, um, you know, can have a high degree of volatility and momentum. And you trade off of that momentum and price movement. But um, a lot of these stocks are priced at around 60 cents, 70 cents a share. Right. And so with that, you know, you, you'd be able to purchase a good amount of shares uh, with, you know, like $500, right? So, yeah. Yeah, and just you're just kind of learning at the beginning, anyways, uh, before. Yes. 
Um, if you can make a little bit of profit, you know, with uh, with a small amount of money, you can still you can make a lot of profit if you buy like a thousand shares or more. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you there too. Just keeping your losses small. I think trading is more about risk control than actually mm-hmm. trying to make profit every single day. It's more just smart taking smart risks, for lack of a better word. Um, and then. And you kind of touched on this too, but what kind of tips would you give yourself if you were to restart over? You were talking about technical analysis, but mm-hmm. maybe like look, how how are you looking at the stocks, or how what what are some key things that you picked up while you were making this journey? So I think what you mentioned earlier is really vital and important. Is that managing risk is kind of the key to successfully being able to trade because you're not going to win every trade, right? Not every trade is going to go in your favor. But if you can get 70% of your trades working out for you well, um, that's great. Uh, being able to do things like um, before you enter into a trade, do your due diligence um, mm. to check, check and make sure that the stock is actually um, going to move in the direction that you want it to. Right. Um, or also that um, you know the company that you're trading, um, you're, you're purchasing the stock for is somewhat reputable or hat is you know what's called uh, oversold. Uh, undervalued, underpriced, because um, likely as the market discovers the stock, it's going to say, "Oh, wow! Like this stock is over oversold." So we, you know, like definitely it could go for a lot more, and then you'll begin to see movement and traction um, in the direction that you want it to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite scanner that you use, a charting tool, and a broker that you use? Sure. Um, so actually, the scanner and the charting tool that I use are one and the same. It's called TradingView. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's free or it's freemium. There's also like, of course. Um, <laughs> you know, additional features that you can purchase for. Uh, actually, I think an inexpensive amount based on what you're what I'm using it for. Um, so I subscribe to the pro version um, of it, which basically gives you more indicators in your charting uh, and also allows you to do intraday scanning. Mm-hmm. So you can basically do a scan for the past hour or, or um, you know, the past four hours or whatever to see, okay, what stocks, you know, have a lot of high volume, right? Things yeah, like that. yeah. Um, which, which is really helpful. Um, yeah, so those are the two for, for the scanner and um, the charting. The charting. Mm-hmm. Um, my broker that I use, I actually started out with with Robinhood, uh, and I had Robinhood for several years now. Oh. But I was doing more of a long term value investing for a while. But ever since getting into more active trading, I've moved on to Webull, which is uh, I would say similar in some aspects to Robinhood, in the sense that it's commission free. But also um, some differences. Um, two of the key ones are that um, they don't have a limit on day trades. You can pretty, pretty much with your own cash um, that you deposit, you can do unlimited day trading. Um, and also uh, there's a benefit of being able to trade outside of market hours. So you can oh, do yeah. pre-market trades. So pretty much my day has changed entirely to where I wake up at 4 a.m. and um, cause I've already got uh, stocks in mind that I've researched for the past day or the past week that I'm looking at and I'm looking to see movement for those and then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll uh, buy or maybe I'll sell um, ones, you know, based on if, if there's a major dip. Um, yeah, so the we, Webull is uh, highly recommended. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely got a good community as well. Yeah. Uh, kind of bouncing on what you were saying about trading on Webull. Um, if you're using a cash account, there's also you can make as many trades as you want, but there's this stipulation that you have to wait for the cash to settle as well yes. after you make the trade, right? So you can only trade with money that you have. And if it's not settled, you really don't have it yet. So, um, And the other thing I've noticed is that I've been using the Thinkorswim platform just to practice, mm-hmm. but I use Webull to you know do real trades like, like you. Um, one big difference I've noticed is that Webull is a lot more simple to use in terms of their interface and mm-hmm. um, just make putting in orders and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. When you glance at Think or Swim, it's like this whole mess of like charts, numbers, and the the layout is very confusing for a beginner. And yeah. I had to watch like a couple videos to actually get it 
acclimated to it. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, we talked about the different uh, tools, uh, you know, scanners, charting, and brokers. You texted me something the other day, and I wanted to bring this up uh, because okay. I thought it was interesting. It's it's a very uh, a very cool opinion. So I, I wanted to elaborate more on this this topic. You cool. uh, you had said something about micro cap momentum. So mm -hmm. my question to you is, why is micro cap momentum trading the quickest way to wealth? Okay, uh, I would say it's the all it's the quickest way to wealth. Um, or I don't know if I could say it's the quickest, but it's a very fast way to wealth. It's also mm -hmm. a fast way to losing money as well. <laughs> um, <right>. Double edged sword. <laughs> right. um, it's 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 both, right? Um, because you know either you you do will do well in the market or you'll not do well in a given day. Um, but I mean, if there's if there's things out there where you can, um, if you're really good, if you could if you can find something that you you can make like twenty k. And that's a really good day, of course. That's, yeah, that's really good <laughs> sounds like Depending it. Depending on the amount that you're putting in, but if you can, if you, if you, so hypothetically speaking, or theoretically speaking, like if you were really good at this, um, and you were really solid at trading, and you were trading micro cap or penny stocks, uh, and you had a fair amount of money, um, you probably could make 20 k a day. There's people out there who do that, mm -hmm. um, believe it or not. Um, granted, they're they're probably like you know they they take off days and stuff because they're they, they can you know yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but it yeah of course um, you know it's I guess like the I guess like the technical aspect of it is you know if you've got um, stocks that are being oversold or being undervalued um, in like the range of under a dollar or maybe like around a dollar two dollars or so. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, or sometimes these stocks, they really are worth that much, right? Mm -hmm. But there's other times where these stocks are actually just overvalued or oversold. I mean, they're undervalued. And um, sometimes it's because a company um, received some bad news or put out some bad news and it caused yeah. the, the price to plummet. Um, but really, if you look at it, like based on their numbers, based on the estimates, they're actually going to do really well. And so... Um, being able to identify um, stocks like that that are actually oversold and then buying into those uh, really can set you up uh, to profit off of a major bounce. Let's say mm -hmm. if a stock was, mm -hmm. you know, dropped down to a dollar, but actually its real price that it consistently has been at is like four dollars, mm -hmm. uh, you'd be able to stand to to profit by a three hundred percent gain, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's it's fun. Um, uh, <laughs> doing but also very profitable yeah um I, I see so it seems like what you're talking about is like the the people who have a lot of experience they're able to pick out the stock at the right time to enter and exit at the right time and mm -hmm. they buy the appropriate amount of shares where they'll gain 1k 2k or more uh, off that sh that share um f for someone like me who's just kind of starting out like i'll put 10 or 20k right and I would have to, I would still have to get an eye to buy the right stock. But mm -hmm. just this past week when I was playing around, um, I was buying like maybe three or four different stocks. So if like one or two of them kind of tank a little bit or I break even, it's cool. And then the other two end up maybe making, I don't know, 50 bucks or whatever. I'm happy with that too for now. Mm -hmm. um, but I like your idea because really like if you find a really solid one, um, it it leads the way to just you know massive profit if you 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 know what you're doing you know yeah um and i think that's a good segue to kind of talk about one of the stocks that we've been following this past week um mm -hmm. you had texted me i believe on thursday or, or so yeah yeah he's texting me on thursday about uh -huh. boxel b-o-x-l yeah. and uh you know i bought in for 100 shares and then uh, Friday, I actually bought in a hundred more shares right before the the day closed. Uh, what what was the story behind that from your angle? Because I got I saw something. Maybe you saw something different too. Yeah. So actually, I had a little bit of what they call FOMO, the fear of missing out. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I I had my money in another stock that actually is doing very well. It's N O V N. Um, but what happened was, um, you know, I started catching wind to. Um, BOXL and saw that there's um, a connection that they have to Samsung, which is mm -hmm. huge, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a large company 
you know, one of the larger tech companies in the world, um, you know, connected to this small kind of penny stock, right? You're like, <laughs> oh, okay. I don't need to know necessarily that they're going to do well in the future. What I need to know is that other people believe that they're going to do right. well. <laughs> Market thinks this way about it. And a lot of people who are on Robinhood thinks it's going to do well. And so based on that, I was like, okay, like, let me, let me throw in a little bit. So actually on Wednesday, I had, um, I traded, you know, a little bit and it was a quick day trade. It was kind of a scalp in and out. Um, and I made about $300 there. And then do you remember what you entered in it about? I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> a lot of uh, trades. <laughs> so, cause it's, it's one of those things where I have in, in Webull just setting you can do on the, the desktop platform where it's quick trading. You literally click one button and it'll, it'll buy, uh, and it'll set a stop loss and it take profit or you can just buy in and then you can hit close and it'll close out your position. Um, just through a matter of clicks or even hotkeys. Um, okay. So it's but, one order or two orders when you push that button? Uh, one order, one order. Uh, okay. It, well, you, you can, you can configure it so that it's one order followed by two queued up orders. Oh, right. Trigger. So yeah. Yeah. Basically it's like, it'll enter in, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll buy or you'll, you'll, you'll go short or go long at a certain price and then it'll set the stop losses and the, um, the take profit for you. Um, or you, of course you've got to configure that yourself. Anyway, so uh, BOXL um, is one of those multi-day runners. And I think that's kind of a key term that's being thrown around a lot within the, uh, the community uh, of people who trade penny stocks for micro cap um, momentum uh, kind of stocks. Uh, uh, if you find a runner, it's like, okay, this stock is potentially gonna be the, the runner of the day mm -hmm. that's gonna move like 200%, 300%, right? right. <laughs> Or over the span of three or four days, or even a week, it's going to continually go up because there's so much hype, there's so much news around it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, like, if you wanted to, you could, uh, of course, you got to kind of know if you're entering in too late or not. Um, mm -hmm. And it's based on kind of doing research and kind of looking at the trends and reading the charts and stuff. But you could technically jump in you know, and stay in for an hour and pull out and then you, you've made some money at least. Right. Right. Um, so yeah. From, from what I saw when you, you texted me on Thursday about Boxo, I was on my practice platform and mm -hmm. I got in, I think around, I don't know, I want to say three, five or something like that. And my target was just like the, the way I'm playing right now is, you know, 10 cents risk, but then I want to make 20% or 20 cent profit. So yeah, I set okay. I set my limit just to sell at 425 or something like that. Cool. It sold at 426, but it ended up shooting up higher to like four dollars and sixty cents or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm kinda like, dang, if I kind of just watched it more and hung out a little bit more, watched it more closely, um, yeah. I would have made more profit even though it was just a practice count. But <clears throat> I try to treat it as the real thing. Um but I probably do need to reset my account because just for just for kicks, I just got a thousand shares of Voxel for like three five, and okay, so yeah. Um, yeah, just playing around and it's I I've been hearing a lot of stuff about it, reading and, and from what you sent me as well. So I'm curious to see how this story really plays out. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it's it's tricky because you know you're you're trading in the one sense off of the hype more than the mm -hmm. actual company mm -hmm. um right if if you if we're long value investors we're we're trying to like look at how is this company going to look in a year or so mm -hmm. you might be a little more conservative mm -hmm. um but because we're only planning to hold for a day maybe a couple of days then it's like okay you know you know let me enter in the tricky part is you don't know when you know there's going to be a major shift in the sentiment mm -hmm. towards you know, XL. Right. So let's say there's news of what's called like a reverse split, where basically what they do is they take the shares and then um, there's a process where it basically gets diluted through mm -hmm. um, the shares getting kind of like the price will go up, but then the value of each share goes down, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. Um, each and, share is worth a little bit more. or Yeah, the shares will. So let's say you've got like a, a stock that's like trading for a dollar. And you happen to have like you know 100 shares of that 
you know, it, it might go up to like $10, $10 right through what's called a reverse split, but then you'll only have like 10 shares. Oh. So in the sense, the value is the same in terms of your full market value of that, of that I stock. See. Yeah. But they just kind of did that to almost kind of fudge the numbers and make it look like, hey, yeah, we're a $10 value stock. <laughs> but then also what it did is it limited the number of shares that are out there. And then usually they'll, they'll do what's called an offering and stuff and, and try to increase the number of shares that are available. Um, so sometimes good, sometimes bad, usually bad. Um, so. so that's definitely something to look out for. You said it was called a reverse split. Reverse split, another, another one is um, there's certain offerings. Mm -hmm. So if there's like a public offering, um, then basically it's like, hey, we're gonna, th we're, gonna, we're gonna add more shares to the market, which means the people who currently own shares, the value of those shares go down, mm. right? Um, or they, they don't have as much right, uh, right. ability to change the overall value of the stock, so. It's like printing yeah. printing bills, like the U.S. Treasury printing Pretty U.S. Much, dollar bills. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, out there. <laughs> making it less scarce, right? So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I've been experimenting with uh, just a basic strategy, um, you know, from the book that uh, we were reading, and one of the ones was recommended is VWAP trading. I don't know yeah. if you that's not how you started out, or, um, but I, I guess my, my I, I want to see what your understanding of it is because I'm, yeah. I'm trying to learn this you know one strategy for like a week or two just to practice yeah. with it my take is that you're basically watch watching the vwap line which is where the institutions are trading mm -hmm. and if you're seeing kind of like this uh this little bounce above the vwap or below yeah. that's yeah. kind of like a trend that you can just trace through yep but the other thing is that institutional traders they have to buy a whole ton of shares right because they have um investors behind them yes. so what you end up getting is like they buy in a little bit they wait and then it just has this little maybe dip one or two dips yeah. before it skyrockets yeah. i've noticed the same thing with boxel so i was super happy when i bought in on the, my practice account at one of the dips yeah. and I'm, I'm trying to figure out more of um just playing with that the other important aspect for VWAP that I, I saw is that you have to look at the volume too, the float, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what's actually moving it. If there's like not as much uh, volume, then it's really not uh, a good, it's not a good uh, thing to, to really go after. Yeah. Um, what other understandings do you have or what other indicators that you use maybe in the past or currently with VWAP that, um, that that makes you a uh, better trade. Yeah. Thing. So my initial kind of introduction to VWAP was that anytime uh, you suspect that the stock is going to be on a really bullish uptrend, mm -hmm. that um, one key indicator of that is that when the stock crosses um, the the valuated average price mm -hmm. line, um, then it, it it just it goes up, right? And there's, there's a lot of uh, additional volume that gets added, which basically is a confirmation that says, okay, there are a lot of people that bought in, um, you know, around or at average this particular price mm -hmm. uh, or price range. Um, and then based on that, okay, there's a lot of, you know, traders that basically have said, okay, yeah, like I'm also going to buy in at this VWAP line, right? This VWAP price. And again, of course, you know, you have the institutional investors, which basically they're training their bots to identify the VWAP line as like, that's where you buy in. Right. 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 And for them, numbers wise, it works out that way in terms of just, you know what, like they're not going to be making like crazy, like to the moon profits, but mm. they're happy with, you know, buying at the volume, volume weighted average price, because then they are in a sense moving along with where the rest of the market is because mm -hmm. you know, you've got a lot of other investors who have purchased shares at this particular point in time right mm -hmm. um with that said so there's what's called anchored vwap which is another kind of newer indicator that's come out um and what anchored vwap does is essentially allow you to set a time uh, uh, a, a point in time and say, okay, I want to anchor based on the trading volume 
since this particular time, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you have some sort of catalyst, like there's news that comes out about a given stock and says, okay, yeah, like, like there's, a, there's a major change in the, um, the movement of the price. Let's say like, the, and you, you'll see it reflected in the chart or let's say there was a major downtrend and then, you know, on, you know, uh, uh, July 18th, there was major news that came out. Um, you could essentially anchor on the, the open market, the, the market open on July 18th and say, I just want to look at the volume since this particular day or time. Oh, okay. And I want to like, I want to like get the average since this particular time, because then it'll give you a more clear picture of, okay, what is the average volume since that catalytic event, that news? And then from there, it's like, okay, now I know generally what's a good place to buy in because I want to I want to be where the market is. I want to buy where where everybody else is buying in, right? right? Or I also want want to be wherever there's transactions that are being made, right? Because VWAP isn't just about buying; it's also about buying and selling, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and so um, that'll give you an idea where okay, if the stock dips under VWAP, right. then potentially it, it could become an area uh, of selling, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, area area of resistance. So you end up wanting to stay below, like short it, stay below the VWAP. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I was researching about VWAP as well. There was uh, one video that mentioned using the moving average or the simple moving average uh, mm -hmm. for two hundred days, mm -hmm. and at any time where you see a, a crossing of the moving average and the VWAP, that signals that it's not a good uh, a good trade that you should make because it's kind of conflicting, right? One is going down, one's going up. So mm -hmm. what they're recommending is like, if they're both going up or going down, it's a better indicator. Of course, nothing's for sure in the stock market. Right. Um, do you, you, so you were saying about the anchoring VWAP. Do you, mm -hmm. do you ever use the moving moving average with VWAP? Or yes. Anything. So my, my chart, uh, I tend to keep pretty simple, but essentially what I have is I've got the five day move moving average, simple moving average. Then I've got the 20 day ex exponential moving average. Mm. And then I have after that, um, the, uh, 50 day simple moving average, the hundred day simple moving average, and then the 200 day, 200 ah, okay. move average, and then VWAP on top of that. Okay. And then sometimes I'll do an anchor VWAP if I'm basing it on an event. And what I want to see, uh, essentially, as any time I know there's going to be a major uptrend, is if there is um, the right order of having the five-day simple moving average, 20-day EMA, and then the 50, 100, 200 um, simple moving average. If those are all in order, the stock's pretty much going to continually go up. If the If there's a cross between... It, let's say usually it'll be like the um the uh what is it the five day might dip under the mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. like either vwap or it might dip under the um the 50 day mm -hmm. then at that point it's like okay it's probably gonna be in a downtrend soon usually it does mm -hmm. so um but then again if you if you start to see the cross see a cross where um you see the five days start to move up and it's crossing over the 50, then you know it's like a, an uptrend's about to start, and that might be a good entry point mm -hmm. if you're already on an uptrend, uh, for example. But um, okay, okay, yeah. So kind of a moving average ordering is is a good indicator. Okay, um, I'll have to check out the EMA, so exponential moving average. I, I've seen that thrown around somewhere in other videos as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then just kind of looking towards the future a little bit. Um, I'm playing with VWAP, but the other one that was recommended for basic beginners, right, is to use the support and resistance line. Yes. To me, that sounds almost like VWAP because you're just trading above and below. But I think I think what it is, is like you're drawing separate lines, right? One for support, one for resistance, and you're following if it's kind of uh, bouncing in between that. Is that... Uh, so my question to you is, uh, is using VWAP and using support and resistance a general 
duel, a good duel to pair together when making a trade? Do you do you ever do that? Yeah, I think so. But so the tricky thing is, you mentioned earlier, like VWAP tends to work really well with institutional um, invested stocks, right? Mm -hmm. And granted, yeah, like anywhere you have smart money, it, that is like that's that's going to be a good stock to trade on because. Well, it can be. Sometimes it can't be because it's like a lot of, a lot of algorithms. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you don't want to trade, you know, with a lot of those, you know, heavily um, algo, uh, you know, high volume stocks. But um, I would say, for me at least, in my experience, it's like identifying levels of support and resistance come first, because from there that allows me to determine entry and exit. Right. Oh, okay. Um, and it's not always going to be the case, but a lot of times, if you have a stock that is rising above a certain level of resistance, mm -hmm. that becomes a new level of support. Oh. And so from there, you can then enter in, um, and then let's say as the stock tries to move upwards, but then it keeps coming down, mm -hmm. you know that there's a level of support that's reached. And so if you want to, you could buy more there at that point. Um, and then, you know, it could either take some news or it could take, just people, you know, recognizing the stock and and choosing the buy buy in, uh, higher volume, and then it'll rise up to that new level of resistance. And then from there, you can kind of like say, okay, like it's reached this level of resistance. You know, is it going to beat it out? Is it gonna is it gonna establish a new right. level of support? If it's not, then it might be a good time to sell, right? Or it may be a good time to kind of like sell some of your shares, right? And scale it out. So yeah. Okay. Cool. That's uh, that's, that's something I'm really looking forward to as well. Maybe that's something I should just kind of touch on and then kind of just observe it this coming week, and just see yeah. how it, it plays out together. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep this video uh, a little bit shorter. It's, it's kind of drawing on. Um, is there anything else you want to mention in the video um, about uh, your trades this week, or any new strategies you're playing with? Or just shout out to your homies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to shout out um, to NOVN um, uh, stock that I, I'm pretty bullish on right now. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think what's been really interesting about this particular um, experience of trading the stock is that there's some really solid uh, due diligence research that's being done mm -hmm. out to where if you go on Twitter and you just search dollar sign NOVN. Um, there's some really good stuff on there. Uh, people will literally, um, you know, talk about how they're going to go to the office in North Carolina and like <laughs> check it out and, and oh, really? see <laughs> what's going on, what's going down there, you know, like wow. stuff like that. Okay. So it's like you kind of have like this phenomenon where you've got the internet, you've got people who are willing to work together and collaborate in order to like confirm, you know, whatever uh, it is that they're long, um, they're bullish about. And then, you know, they provide that to the community. It becomes a great way to say, hey, yeah, like we should all jump on this or we should continually like keep it going. Right. And in a sense, that's kind of the phenomenon you're seeing in like Robinhood, in the Robinhood community where you have like people who are buying in into sometimes stocks that are overhyped. Like you look at like, um, what is it? A key example is a Hertz, Hertz stock. Um, you the know, car, the car company? The car, uh, yeah, the rental car company. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, you know, once it filed for bankruptcy, you had all of these you know, people coming in buying because they're 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 thinking probably, oh, hey, Hertz, it, that's a solid company. Yeah, I've it's heard been of a while. Them. And so I'm going to buy in because it's cheap right now. If shares are cheap. It's probably going to bounce up. Mm -hmm. And it, it actually became like a uh, self fulfilling prophecy where because people were like, hey, let's buy this cheap stock. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. You know, it was during the time of the market going down. Yeah, um, it, it actually went up. You know. <laughs> Granted, it didn't last very long, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but people made some money off of it. So, um, yeah. All right, cool. Some people lost money. Let's remember that as well. So anytime you are entering into trading your holding position and it goes up like crazy, somebody else is going to have to buy from you. And when they buy from you, they're likely going to, they're going to buy it from you uh, in a place where it's, you know, maybe overvalued at that point. Yeah, yeah. And that's their choice, right? Yeah. Hopefully, they know that means that in them, in their mind, they're like, "Yeah, it's going to keep going up." For you, you're just like, "No, nah, I think I'm good," you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned no, no v, N O V N, and to clarify, this is more about it's a company that deals with the COVID 
um, vaccine? Kind of, yeah. They they, or... they use a nitric nitric oxide um, kind of oh, angle yeah. to try to um, you know treat COVID. Um, it's some respiratory. Thing. Yeah, I think I think that's what I read too. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to just to I guess close out. Um, it's I I heard that it's good to share, you know, as day traders sharing strategies and experiences. So we're like we're all in the same boat. We kind of grow together because we're really mm-hmm. we're just fighting the machine. I realize at the end of the day, it's kind right. of like the matrix. We're fighting like the algorithms and you know the big corporate world, and we're just here like you know Neo and Trinity and Morpheus kind of slipping around. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard the same. Uh, analogy with like guerrilla warfare for example we're like guerrilla mm-hmm. fighters and the other guys are like the army or whatever but um yeah thanks so much for uh sharing your experiences and i'm sure everyone's benefit i've especially experienced uh, benefit from things that you've told me so um any last closing thoughts before i uh close this video out um i guess for those who are watching if you're kind of on the fence you're not really sure about getting into trading I'd say give it a shot. Um, it's definitely kind of a, not a new way necessarily, but I would say there's a lot of new, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, people who are getting into trading around this time because mm-hmm. um, people are kind of at home and, you know, it's yeah, very yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's where a lot of it kind of came from. Um, yeah, so I mean, I would say give it a shot. If, it's, if it becomes a means of profitability for you, then great. Yeah. Uh, if not, at least you tried it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't risk too much of your money. <laughs> Always going to be new players in the game. And um, absolutely support Brian. I'm going to have his um, Webull affiliate link at the bottom. And so just throw a couple stocks his way because if you sign up, um, he gets a free stock valued at, I'm not sure the price anymore. I think they might have uh, changed yeah. it. It's not like five bucks. It's not really a lot. Yeah. It's more, honestly, like I would say Webull is just a solid you know, platform to get into. And, yeah, it's really user friendly compared to Thinkorswim. So I can vouch for that. <laughs> um, cool. Thanks again, Brian. And uh, I'll catch you next time. And, uh, have a good one. Thanks for having me.